السلام عليكم. Today I'm going to tell you a story. And this story is about the Afghan economy. The Afghan economy is very hard to conceptualize, to, um, to explain it very easily. So I've decided to introduce um, another story next to it to help you imagine what it really is, to, to visualize what I'm talking about. All right? So this story is a, is a very old story. It's, it's well known. Uh, it's about a farmer. And this farmer, he has a goose, a golden goose. And that goose, every day, lays a small golden egg made out of solid gold. And every day the farmer comes and takes the golden egg and goes and buys whatever he wants, lives a good life. But every day he gets a little greedier. And every day he wants more eggs and more eggs. And he wants that, that little goose. It's a, it's a large bird, a beautiful bird. He wants that goose to lay more eggs and more eggs. And then one day he says, well, all these eggs are coming out of this goose. So let me just cut it open, and I'll, I'll take all the eggs from out, and I'll, I'll, that'll be great. I don't have to wait every day. I'll just take the eggs out, right? So he cuts up the goose, and guess what? No eggs. Now the goose is dead, and he has no more eggs every day. So this is the story of the Afghan economy. And I'm going to go through eight slides, and at the end of each slide, I'm going to tell you how it relates to this story, right? And in the story, the farmer is the Afghan government, and the goose is the private sector. It's the Afghan businesses. It's the economy of Afghanistan. It's what needs to be nourished uh, in this country. Okay? So, a bit about it. I'm not trying to blame anyone. I'm not trying to criticize anyone. I'm trying to provide constructive feedback, what we can do together to improve, uh, to, to nurture the society. Um, there are challenges in Afghanistan, I'm not going to deny that, but we should face them with conviction, right, and face them realistically. My ultimate goal of this presentation is that the government should enable the private sector, not compete with the private sector. In some cases, my suggestions, they require some prerequisites, I understand that. Um, and I don't expect everything to happen overnight. You can start small, start with one ministry, start with one sector, and then have that a model that will expand and grow across the country. There are problems with the private sector itself. I'm not unaware with that. Um, there's, uh, there's things that need to be done to improve the private sector. You need to stop monopolies. We need to stop price fixing. We need to stop anti-competitive behavior. But overall, the government needs to communicate hope to the people. Yes, there's people leaving the country because of security or because of the economy, but really what I think is missing is hope. If they saw a better future, if they saw a light at the end of the tunnel, if they understood what the farmers' plans were, then they wouldn't be so discouraged. And that's what we need to do to restore hope and, as the theme of this conference is, to dream again. Okay? So, I'm going to tell you the problem, and then I'm going to tell you the solution, okay? That, that's what I'm going to do. First, the problem. What is the problem? The problem in Afghanistan, there's many, many of them. There's increasing inflation, right? Everyone knows the Afghani is 69 Afghani now to a dollar, and it keep, continues to slide. There's decreasing military contracts. So we had a contract economy for the past 15 years where we had over 100,000 foreign troops, and now that's gone down to 10,000. The entire bubble economy around that has changed dramatically. There's decreasing donor projects. Um, there's estimates that half of donor funding has reduced for Afghanistan. After 15 years, of course, there's donor fatigue. There's massive capital flight leaving Afghanistan. So there's people uh, uh, taking their money to invest in other locations, Dubai, Turkey, other places around the world. Why, why risk it here? So massive amount of funds and money leaving the country. There's a massive brain drain, legal and illegal, people that are, uh, that are not happy, that are, that, are, that are leaving the situation and going away from Afghanistan. Particularly worrisome, people that have gained skills and knowledge after 15 years of being here, now we're suddenly being stolen of our most precious asset, the minds of our, of our youth. Then there's increasing percentage of unemployed. As, all, you know, as the economy shrinks, more and more people are unemployed. But what's even more dangerous is that every year we have fresh graduates. And the, the, the population demographics of Afghanistan are that 60% you know, of the, the country, 70% of the country is under the age of 30. So every year we have increasing numbers of graduates, fresh graduates, and no jobs. So every year this problem is getting bigger and bigger. It's not going away. Basic needs, the prices are going up, 
and the government has increased uh, costs. So internet, 10% more, telephone, 10% more. And then doubling of the gross base tax rates from 2% to 4%, doubling. So people say, oh, 2%, 4%, it's not so much, doesn't matter, doesn't sound like a lot. No, this is gross tax rates. So just to give you a little bit of a accounting lesson, you have your revenue, so let's say $100 in revenue, you have your expenses, Let's say you had $98 of expenses, and then you have your profit, which is left at the bottom, maybe 2% profit, right? Now, gross tax rates takes off of the top, regardless of whether you made a profit or not. So it's one thing if you take from your profit, there's 20% of your income tax that goes to the government. That's, that's there already. But the Afghan government doubled the gross tax rate. So off the top, before you even calculate your profit, you have to pay 4%. So if a business was only making 1% profit, but the government is asking for 4%, only made, I'm sorry, 1% revenue, and now the government is asking for 4% of the revenue as tax, doesn't make any sense, right? Some, some businesses have very small margins. Well, anyhow, this is the catastrophe. This is the problem in Afghanistan, right? The private sector is facing all, all sorts of issues from every angle. So let's go back to our story of the, of the goose. You have the goose there. And you have the farmer, okay, so picture the goose, right? You're looking at the goose. The farmer comes, kicks it. You had one golden egg a day, double, two eggs a day, right? The goose says, from where, right? Where am I going to get the golden? I, I lay one goose an egg. What am I going to do? Today? No, no. Yes. Okay. Now, what should have the government done instead of kicking the goose, right? There's other ways to raise revenue. Right? You can raise revenue by creating a sukuk offering for bonds and raise funds for dams, railroads, and power. You can create a financial exchange, which I previously talked about, for foreign currency, capital notes, commodities, equities. You can increase tax on luxury items. Right? Why not increase tax on cigarettes? Why not increase tax on luxurious cars or properties or processed foreign foods? Increase tax not on your basic necessities and foods of the everyday Afghan on the street. Right? There's other ways to raise revenue. And the last one, broaden the tax base, right? So this farmer, he might have 10 chickens, but he's going and strangling this one chicken. Give me more eggs. Well, there might be some other chickens. Get some small, small, tiny eggs. Instead of putting all your eggs in one basket, instead of taking everything from this single goose, which is the telecom and the big businesses in Afghanistan. Most businesses don't. Broaden the tax base across all Afghan citizens, 30 million, across all districts, 400, across all 34 provinces, right? Have everyone pay their fair share, all right? So raise revenue. In, in our example, you're taking eggs from other chickens as well, not kicking the same chicken to give you more and more and more. Consolidate the government. Now, the goose is gonna ask the farmer, what are you doing with my eggs? Why do you need two eggs now? You were happy with one egg, right? Why do you need 10 houses? Why do you need four different kitchens, right? Why don't you consolidate yourself? Reduce your costs. Then you don't need two eggs, right? The farmer might say, well, one kitchen is for cooking meat and one kitchen is for vegetables and one is this. No, no, no. It's the same thing. Consolidate. So you can consolidate the government. Until 1979, the United States of America, a country with 200 million population, they had one department, which is a ministry, one ministry for health, education, and welfare. Just one. Consolidate. Do we merge? Merge our education ministries. Merge all of our construction ministries. Merge our commerce and business industries. Merge our security, media, welfare. They're all doing the same thing. They're stepping on top of each other, duplicating it. I have to get an ISA license, I have to get a Ministry of Commerce license. Why just merge, reduce costs, right? So in our example, the farmer can cut his costs. Maybe he doesn't need two eggs after all. Now, even more dangerous than the kicking, and even more harmful to the health of my goose, my golden goose, is this, is the state-owned enterprises. Right? These are relics from the communist era. These are government-owned businesses, right? Government-owned businesses. So, the government owns, uh, uh, the government does all the regulations, the government owns all the infrastructure, the government is regulating the private sector, and it's competing with the private sector. So there's a private sector fuel station, and then there's a government sector fuel station. How is it going to compute? You're making the rules, you have the security, you have the power, and you're competing? 
No, do one or the other, right? They're in telecom competing with, uh, unfairly with other telecom agencies. Many of these state-owned enterprises, and these are just a few, there's actually 76 of them, are, are very, very harmful, right? They drain the treasury, Ariana Airlines. They have f massive corruption amongst them. They're not helping the farmer, right? They're hurting the economy. And most of all, they're competing and damaging the private sector. Now, in our example, we had, a, we had these 10 geese, and we had a, uh, a farmer. Now, the farmer decided to take 10 snakes and throw it in with them. So the snakes do two things. The snakes eat the geese themselves. The snakes also eat the food of the geese. So the geese have less food, right? If you're taking the customers from the private sector, the private sector needs food to survive. So the geese get smaller and smaller because the snakes are eating their food. Now, on top of that, the government is doing certain functions, right, itself. And it has human resources, payroll, audit, all these different functions. There are some people in the government today that still haven't been paid their salary since 2015. Imagine how many months they're working without salary. They have to loan, they have to borrow, they have to steal, right? Because the government hasn't paid their salary. Now, if you outsource the salary and you give it to a company and you say, this company, you go pay government employees. If you're late by one week, we're going to terminate your contract and we're going to fine you this much. Great, give it to another company. But with the government ministry or directorate, can you fire the directorate? Right? Is it possible? No. It's just going to be late and late and late. There's no accountability. Human resources, it takes months and months to hire someone to the government. Outsource it. Audit. The government is auditing its own self. A little bit of a conflict of interest. And on and on and on. If you can't do it, if you can do it, great. Nur ala nur. If you can't do it, find someone else who can do it and hold them responsible, right? And encourage the private sector to do it. That will increase jobs as well. So let's go to our example. Our example, we have a farmer. The, the goose is there. The goose is saying, okay, I'm giving you a golden egg every, every day. At least, at least clean my stall. At least feed me, right? At least do some basic services, right? And if you can't do it, farmer, you're too busy to clean me and feed me, can you hire some workers? Some workers to come and do it if you can't do it? Because if sooner or later, there's going to be a problem. Outsource, right? Government spend, what, 300 million on itaskira? Does anybody in this room have one? No. Outsource it. Now, it's not that difficult, right? There, there are solutions, right? People get hopeless. I gave you all the problems, but there's solutions as well. And one of the solutions came from the government itself. Three years ago, the Ministry of Finance proposed a comprehensive investment package to attract investment to Afghanistan. This package was wonderful. It included long-term, low-cost government land to be leased to the private sector. It included um, uh, low-cost government financing. It included a 10-year corporate tax holiday for anyone that invested out of their pocket a million dollars or more. It included a customs duties cap for raw materials. It included uh, increasing customs duties for foreign goods if we produced locally. And they also discussed special economic zones at the major airports, turning, converting the military bases. So all these things are there. Right? It went to the cabinet. The cabinet liked it. There were some problems with the, law, with the laws regarding land, and so it was kicked back. But these are already on the table. We need to, we need to implement them. We need to make them a reality. Right? Because... Right now, going to our example, the goose is laying there with his heart open, right? He has no, no eggs inside him. We need something drastic. We need some surgery to stitch him up. We need to fix a place for him. We need to give him clean water, right? We need to give him uh, food. The food of businesses is electricity. Everything in Afghanistan is upside down. Instead of giving businesses food, electricity, at lower costs, we have them pay many times more than residences. Why? We should, we should reduce their costs. They're giving you an egg. At least give them a good environment. At least give them a nice place to set up shop. And continue to cultivate it. So this is my last slide. It's not, it's not just a one-day thing. Once you have the policies, once you attract more birds to your farm to lay uh, geese, you have to, you have to encourage them. 
right? No one's going to come if you keep increasing the, the visa costs, if you take the three months to give someone a visa to Afghanistan. Iran just announced 150 countries visa-free travel. Why not Afghanistan? Let people come and invest, right, on certain countries. Launch a branding campaign. Tell the world what we have to offer. Three trillion dollars worth of minerals, right? An amazing Afghanistan branding campaign that Duran is going to talk about later. The government asks for guarantees and performance bonds from the private sector. These are people that are risking their own money. You should give them a guarantee that they're coming to Afghanistan. Give them a performance bond that you're going to pay them on time, which you never do. Have big infrastructure pro uh, projects to hire millions of Afghans, not thousands, to build dams, power plants, tunnels, highways, railways, right? After all this money you're going to save, spend it on the right place. Right now, you have politicians, very low level, that have a big army around their house. That's who you're protecting, right? No, no, no. Don't protect the farmer's house. Go protect the goose. That goose is giving you the eggs. If that goose dies or gets sick or gets cancer, what are you going to do? That's who the police should be protecting, is the businesses, not the politicians. Contract enforcement. And finally, regularly talking. Respect your goose. What do you need? Do you need more water? Do you need more food? Do you need a nice house above you? Do you need security? All right. Once we can attract investment, we can nurture our business, we can treat each other with respect, we can get rid of the scrooge of corruption in Afghanistan, and we only then, only, only then, will Afghanistan truly be able to succeed. Right? Thank you for your time.